This is the second in a three-part Blender video series that demonstrates how to make an animation of a robot dog. In the first video, we modeled the body of the dog. In the second video, we'll set up the rigging so that we can control the movements of the dog. To rig this dog, we're going to add an armature which is made up of bones. Bones can be connected together to form a chain of bones which will bend at the joints. This is what we're going to do for the legs. Then after the bones are set up, we'll parent the mesh to the bones so that as the bones move, the mesh will move with it. This is where we left off in the previous video. So let's start by switching to solid view. And then press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then move the 3D cursor to the center of the front shoulder by left clicking. And now add an armature by pressing Shift A and then select Armature and then Single Bone. To allow the bones to be seen, even when they're behind the mesh objects, click the Object Data button and add a check mark next to X-Ray. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view and then press Tab for edit mode. Bones have three elements that can be selected separately, the root, the body, and the tip. If you select the root or the tip, then you can move just that element. If you select the body, then you can move the whole bone. We're going to move the whole bone, so right-click the body if it's not already selected. Then rotate it on the x-axis by pressing R, then X, then 90, then Enter. Then press G to move and position it so that the tip of the bone is at the center of the rod that connects to the shoulder. Then right-click the tip of the bone to select it and drag it to the center of the shoulder. Now press 1 on the number pad for front view. We're going to add another bone by extruding. When we do this, the current bone will be the parent of the new bone. So press E to extrude and drag the tip of the bone to the center of the knee. Then press E again and drag the tip of the bone to the center of the sphere. Now we're going to add a foot bone, but we don't want any of these other bones to be its parent, so we're not going to extrude. Instead, left-click here to move the 3D cursor, then press Shift-A to add a new bone. Next, right-click the body of the bone to select it. Then rotate it on the Y-axis by pressing R, then Y, then 90, then Enter. Then press G to move and line up the root of the bone with the tip of the previous bone. Then press 3 on the number pad for right side view and drag it to the center. Now click the Bone button and name this bone Foot. Next we'll add a bone that we'll use to control the body of the dog. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then left click here to move the 3D cursor. Now press Shift A to add a bone. Then press 3 on the number pad for right side view and right click the body of the bone to select it. Then drag it to the center. Name this bone Body. Now we're going to make the body bone the parent of the shoulder bone. So right click the body of the shoulder bone to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right click the body bone to add it to the selection. The bone that we selected last will be the parent. Now press Ctrl P and select Keep Offset. We're using the Keep Offset option because we want these bones to be separated from each other. Now let's look at what we have so far. The body bone is the parent of the shoulder bone, which is the parent of the upper leg bone, which is the parent of the lower leg bone. The foot bone is separate. Now let's look at how these bones interact with each other. To do that, switch to Pose mode. This is the mode that we'll be using when we set up the different poses for the animation. To see how these bones interact, I'll select the body bone and rotate it. You'll notice that all of the bones down the chain rotate with it. Since the foot bone is not part of the chain, it doesn't move. 
If I select a bone in the middle of the chain and rotate it, the bones down the chain rotate, but its parent bone does not. The positions of the bones which we set up in edit mode are called their rest position. To return the bones to the rest position, press A once or twice until all of the bones are selected. Then from the Pose menu, select Clear Transform and then All. Next, we're going to add an inverse kinematics bone constraint. This gives us a way to move the end of the bone chain and have the other connected bones automatically move with it in a reasonable way. So right-click the lower leg bone to select it. This is the last bone in the chain. Now click the Bone Constraints button. You may need to expand the window on the right to bring the Bone Constraints button into view. Note that there's also an Object Constraints button, but the one that you need to click is the Bone Constraints button that has an image of a bone next to a chain. Now click Add Bone Constraint and select Inverse Kinematics. Next, click in the Target Entry box and select the armature that the foot bone is part of. In our case, we only have one armature, so just select Armature. Then click in the Bone Entry box and select Foot. This will cause the leg to follow the foot. So now if I select the foot bone and then move it, the bones in the bone chain move with it. But you'll notice that all of the bones are moving, including the body bone. But what we want are for the leg and shoulder bones to move, but not the body bone. So right-click the lower leg bone again to select it. Then set the chain length to 3. This will now allow the foot bone to only move the bottom three bones in the chain. Now if I select the foot bone and move it, only the two leg bones and the shoulder bone move with it. Also, if I select the body bone and move it, the foot bone doesn't move. This is important for times when we want the foot to be firmly planted on the floor. When you use inverse kinematics, there are multiple directions that the joints between the bones can bend. Therefore, we need a way to control the bending direction so that it will look more realistic. There are multiple methods that can be used to accomplish this, and we're going to use two of them. The first method is already done. When we set up the initial rest positions of the bones, we added a bend at the knee. This will cause the knee to bend backward instead of forward. The second method that we're going to use is to lock out some of the directions that we don't want the joints to bend. To do this, right-click the bottom leg bone to select it. Then click the Bone button and open the Inverse Kinematics section. This is where we can lock out the bending directions. To determine which directions to lock out, we're going to lock out all of the directions and then unlock them one at a time. So click the X, Y, and Z buttons to lock out rotations on all three axes. Then right-click the top leg bone to select it and click all three lockout buttons. Then right-click the shoulder bone to select it and click the three lockout buttons. Now right-click the foot bone to select it and move it forward a little. We'll set up the shoulder bone first, so right-click it to select it. Now click the lockout button for the x-axis to unlock it and watch how the shoulder bone rotates. Nothing happened, so click the x button again to lock it. Now click the button for the y-axis. This time the shoulder bone rotated correctly and the end of the bone chain moved to the foot bone, so this is the axis that we want to keep unlocked. But to demonstrate what happens when only the z-axis is unlocked, I'll lock the y-axis and unlock the z-axis. In this case, the end of the bone chain moved to the foot bone, but the shoulder bone rotated on the wrong axis to accomplish this. So I'll lock the z-axis and unlock the y-axis. Now right-click the foot bone to select it and then move it back to its starting location. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view and then drag the foot bone to the left a little. Now right-click the top leg bone to select it. We're going to set up this bone to bend outward. So unlock the x-axis. Nothing happened, so lock it again. Now unlock the y-axis. The end of the bone chain moved to the foot, but the bone rotated in the wrong direction. So lock the y-axis and unlock the z-axis. This time it rotated correctly, so leave the z-axis unlocked.
Next, right-click the foot bone to select it and drag it to the right to center it over the foot. Then press 1 on the number pad for front view and drag the foot up a little. Now right-click the bottom leg bone to select it. Then unlock the x-axis. It rotated correctly and the end of the bone chain moved to the foot bone, so this is the correct axis to unlock. But to show what happens when the other two axes are unlocked, I'll lock the x-axis and unlock the y-axis. Nothing happens, so I'll lock the y-axis and unlock the z-axis. This time it didn't rotate correctly, so now I'll lock the z-axis and unlock the x-axis. Now the rotation directions for all three bones are set up. So if I select the foot bone and press G to move it, then you can see that the leg is moving very nicely. If I select the body bone and move it, the foot bone stays firmly in place. Now let's move the bones back to their rest positions. So press A twice to select all of the bones. Then from the Pose menu, select Clear Transform, and then All. I'm going to save what I have so far. Next, we're going to copy all of the leg bones to the back of the dog. So press Tab for Edit Mode. Then right-click the body of the foot bone to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right-click the body of the leg and shoulder bones to add them to the selection. Now press 1 on the number pad for front view. Then duplicate the bones and drag them on the x-axis by pressing Shift D, then X, then drag them until the shoulder bone is centered with the back cylinder, then left click. Now right click the joint between the top and bottom leg bones to select it. Then drag it until it's centered with the back knee. Next we're going to copy the leg bones from the right side of the dog to the left side. So right click the body of the back foot bone to select it. Then hold down the shift key and right click the body of the leg and shoulder bones, the front foot bone, and the front leg and shoulder bones. Then press 3 on the number pad for right side view. Then duplicate the bones and drag them on the Y axis by pressing Shift D, then Y, then drag to the right, and left click. Next, we're going to reverse their direction on the y-axis by scaling with a value of negative 1. So press S, then Y, then minus 1, then Enter. Then drag the bones sideways until they are aligned with the legs in the model. Next, we're going to add a root bone that will be the parent bone of all of the other bones. So press 1 on the number pad for front view. We're going to put the root bone in front of the head, so left click here to move the 3D cursor. Then press Shift A to add a bone. Now press 3 on the number pad for right side view, right click the body of the bone to select it, and then drag it to the center. Name this bone Root. Next, right-click the body of the body bone to select it. Then hold down the Shift key and right-click the body of the four foot bones to add them to the selection. Then while still holding down the Shift key, right-click the body of the root bone to add it to the selection. The last bone that's added will be the parent. Then press Ctrl P and select Keep Offset. Now let's look at what the body and root bones do. So switch to Pose mode. I'll select the body bone and move it. You'll notice that the leg bones move, but the feet don't. If I select the root bone and move it, then all of the bones move. Now let's connect the bones to the mesh objects. Start by making sure that you're in Pose mode. Also, make sure that all of the bones are in their rest position, so press A twice to select all of the bones. Then from the Pose menu, select Clear Transform, and then All. Now right-click the front right foot mesh object to select it. Then hold down the Shift key 
and right-click the foot bone to add it to the selection. Then press Ctrl P and select Bone. Now the bone is the parent of the mesh. Next, right-click the mesh object of the lower leg. Then shift right-click the lower leg bone. Then press Ctrl P and select Bone. Now right-click the mesh object of the upper leg. Then shift right-click the upper leg bone. Then press Ctrl P and select Bone. Now right-click the mesh object of the shoulder. Then shift right-click the shoulder bone. Then press Ctrl P and select Bone. Now let's see how this is working so far. So I'll select the foot bone and move it. The leg mesh objects are moving with the bones, so everything looks fine. Now I'll connect the other bones to the mesh objects, but I'll speed up the video while I do this. Now we're going to connect the body mesh object to the body bone. So right click the head to select the body mesh. Then hold down the shift key and right click the body bone. Then press Ctrl P and select bone. So now I'll test everything out. So I'll select a foot and press G to move it. Then I'll select and move this foot. Then this foot. Then this foot. Now I'll select the body bone and move it. And as before, notice that the feet don't move. Now I'll select the root bone and move it. Everything moves with the root bone. Now let's move the bones back to their rest positions. So press A twice to select all of the bones. Then from the Pose menu, select Clear Transform, and then All. I'm going to save what I have so far. Well, that concludes this video. In the next video, we'll use the Graph Editor, Dope Sheet, and NLA Editor together to set up the animation. Thanks for watching, and please subscribe and leave a comment.